Hello and welcome to the Ditton Works YouTube channel where today I have the great delight in reviewing a brand new pair of speakers from a brand new company. But first of all I need to tell you a story. So this is the story. I was contacted by a friend of mine called Matt McNulty, who's a massive audiophile, Townsend rock guru, and former Celestian employee as well, and just all round nice guy, likes VWs, but don't hold that against him. He contacted me and asked, had I got the original Ditton 66 frequency plot? And I said I had, but I'm not sure where it was. Give me a few days to try and find it. And I found it, but the, the quality of it wasn't particularly good, but I sent it to him anyway. I think it was a photocopy of a photocopy I had. And I then asked him, why on earth would you want a Ditton 66 frequency plot? Because at the time he had a pair of Celestian A3s. And he said a good friend of his called Alan Clark was going to build a new pair of speakers that were homage to the original Ditton 66. And I thought, this is great, you know, that's a really good idea. That's something I'd toyed about with, but to be honest with you, didn't have the time or the skill to actually do it. Now, the Ditton 66 is a famous, famous speaker. There's not many people who haven't heard of a Ditton 66. So, a few months later, Matt messaged me again and said, have a look at these. And he sent me a picture of the Alcris Audio AR66 designed by Alan Clark. And I was blown away, absolutely blown away. Phenomenally finished, absolutely glorious looking speakers. Um, they were then posted on the Celestian Facebook fan page, which myself and Matt are admins on. And what can only be described as a social media equivalent of a stand and ovation, everybody thought they were fantastic. They have been to a hi-fi show, they weren't on demonstration, but they were there to look at, and several people were very complimentary of Alan Clark's work. So, why am I telling you all this? I then contacted Alan Clark to say, I'm over the moon, these are fantastic, this AR66 design is great. And he then explained to me that there were many more speakers in the range. And I thought, fantastic, we had a conversation, and he agreed to send me a pair of their smaller speakers from the range called the AR6, which is what we're gonna talk about now. I'll post a link in the comments to Alcris Audio's website, but right there are the AR6, and there are many in the range. It's a fantastic range. You've got the AR4, AR6, AR8, AR10, and several others leading right up to the AR66. Very simple and easy to understand. You've got no 85th anniversary GTI XED versions in this series. Very simply broken down. AR4, AR6, AR8 and so on. Which I thought was great. It makes it much easier to understand what's going on in the range. So let's have a closer look at the actual speakers themselves. So here we go. These are the Alcris Audio AR6 speakers. Magnetic grill covers. I love that, it does away with these peg holes that you find in the baffle boards. So what we've got here is uh, approximately a six and a half inch long throw woofer, which has got very soft rubber surround, so that's gonna be able to achieve pretty hefty bass response. And a tweeter with this very wide surround, which looks very similar to the ones you'd find on my Spendor Classic 2.3s, or some of the other BBC style design speakers. So you've got this fantastic tweeter on there. And um, now this, is pure genius. My other half always wants me to run the grills off on my spendors because they look better. And to be honest with you, they sound marginally better with the grills off, but I have nowhere to put them. And I'm always worried that they're gonna lay around somewhere and get damaged. The other thing as well, with a sort of doped cone, with the grills left off all the time, they do tend to attract dust. Now, grills on grills off in use, this is where the genius part comes in. Alan Clark has designed these speakers so the grill covers can be held on the side of the cabinet. So there's hidden magnets or hidden little steel buttons under the veneer. Now not only is that great for storage, these serve another purpose. It helps with diffraction. Now I'm sure you're all saying, but these are acoustically transparent grills. How on earth does it help with dispersion? 
Well, the edge isn't acoustically transparent and it's curved. So when you put that on the side there, you're effectively giving yourself almost a curved baffle. That's very, very clever. Two-way design, front ported. As I've discussed, you've got a long throw woofer and a really nice tweeter. So just a little bit more about this diffraction um, grill cover idea. You run them both on the inside of the cabinet. So you remove them when you're in use, clip them on the side, and as I said earlier, it helps with diffraction. It's giving you almost an effective rounded baffle. So they're both on the inside. I, I find this just an absolutely genius idea on so many levels, it's just brilliant. But the way these speakers image is got to be up there with some of the best I've ever heard. It's, everybody says holographic. That's fine to say that, but what does that really mean? What it means is when you're listening to these speakers and you've got them all set up properly, when you're listening to them, they just disappear. It's, it's, it's not like you're suddenly hearing the left or suddenly hearing the right. I can give you an example that when pieces of music were being played on violins, you could almost hear that as the bow was being pulled across, the transition of that sound between the speakers was absolutely without gap. There wasn't a gap in the middle of it. It wasn't left and right. It was just left to right. So with your eyes closed, it just absolutely felt like you were sitting right in front of the violinist playing across the strings. That is an illusion that everybody is trying to get to with their hi-fi. So once it's all set up and you sit there in that sweet spot, it honestly sounds like you're there or as close as you can be. Obviously, on a proper live venue, you've got the acoustics of the hall and all the other things attributed to that, that the actual instruments have a place in space. But these do a fantastic job of simulating that, that I honestly was totally immersed in that BBC recording. So like I said, the width of the baffle was important. That gave you that tremendous ability for these speakers to image impeccably well. The sort of anti-diffraction grill cover idea, pure genius, it really, really works. So about the sound of these speakers, um, I tried loads of different styles of music and they cover everything really, really well. Um, a particular favorite of mine on these speakers was Massive Attack's Unfinished Sympathy, which is a track I've loved for years and years and years. Interesting fact on that, that the guys at Massive Attack, when they were recording that and when they were producing the track, they wanted a live orchestra to play the string sections and they couldn't afford to do it. So they sold their cars, which I think were BMWs, to pay for a live orchestra to record the strings. And playing that track on here, the, everybody, if they're familiar with that track, will know it's got an enormous amount of bass. And these speakers handled that perfectly. Um, when They just don't give up. They, you can play them incredibly loud and they will just keep giving it to you and giving it to you. The bass wasn't massively overblown. You couldn't hear the ports. There was no port chuffing. It was kept well in control, very well timed, very coherent, and pretty deep for a speaker of that size, to be honest with you. Then when you move up to the mid band, with the vocals on that track, were just clear and free of coloration. Very, very nice to listen to. So the speakers were able to deal with this pretty hefty amount of bass in that recording. Vocals were good. The string section, as I've mentioned, was live recorded proper orchestra, so no synthesizers or anything there, came through clear and gloriously. The HF was very detailed, very controlled, never harsh, but really, really nice and not fatiguing in any way. And in all honesty, I did play that track pretty loud, filled the room full of sound. You didn't lose any of your imaging. They didn't lose control. You do sometimes find with the smaller two-way speakers that if the bass gets pretty intense, obviously that driver is having to deal with so much extension that the mid-range can become a little bit blurred. And I detected none of that with these speakers. They dealt with that absolutely effortlessly. I did try classical music. This is a particular favorite of mine. I don't know if you can see that. So this is the virtuoso violin Paganini with Jack Liebeck on violin. And I tried La Campanella, which normally is played on a piano, but on violin, when I was saying about able to detect the sort of bow 
drag across the strings shifting across space definitely it was just so immersive and I completely forgot that it was a live recording when I was listening to it I was so immersed that when the audience applauded at the end I actually almost went to applaud myself <laughs> which is true testament to how good these speakers sound and um, they're not quite as rich in tone as something like the BBC the modern BBC style um, speakers something from like Chartwell or Graham Audio, Spendor Harbour, so on and so forth but they cost many more times than what these Alcris Audio AR6s or the AR8s do. Have a look on the website and you'll be shocked at the price that these are set at because they're incredible value for money. To get that kind of tonal characteristics, impeccable imaging and very well controlled speakers with very little coloration, no port chuffing, none of the negatives that you sometimes find on some of these speakers. These had none of that. They're incredibly well thought out, very well designed, very well built. That's a real wood veneer on there as well. None of this vinyl wrap that you sometimes find on speakers at similar sorts of prices, to be honest with you. So absolutely top-notch pair of speakers. Massive thanks to Alan Clark at Alcris Audio for sending these out to me. I'm gonna enjoy them for a few more days before I send them back to you. But that's the Dittenworks review on the AR6 from Alcris Audio. Take care, guys. I'll speak to you soon.